Hi, let's talk about settings, but first, spoiler warning, I'm going to show some clips and stuff from High End Duties, Extreme Trials, Savage, Ultimates, um, and in doing so I might spoil like boss identities, aesthetics, arena aesthetics, that kind of thing. So if you're not basically caught up on MSQ and uh, all like the story content, story version of normal raids, all that kind of stuff, um, then just be aware that you might see things. Okay. This is kind of like a guide, although I I don't know, I want to consider it more of like a one-sided discussion where I just talk about my settings and what settings I think are good. Not all of the settings that I've chosen are what I think are the actual best ones. Sometimes they're just the best ones for me. And I'm not going to be completely comprehensive and go through absolutely everything. Uh, this is primarily going to be like focused on raid gameplay, um, PvE raid gameplay. Oh, also, I only play mouse and keyboard, so uh, there's not going to be anything in here for controller players. If you're a controller player, I'm sorry, I just there's I don't have anything to say about it. Um, I'm also not going to go through any like basics for like brand new sprouts, um, things like oh like here's how you roll your like it's not a guide to playing either. It's just it's it's going to be settings. It's going to be HUD, um, keybinds. So yeah. Um, so should you watch if you. Uh, know me and know that you're like a more advanced and better player than me and you're like you know you know what you're doing then you probably don't really need to watch this video um, and you shouldn't necessarily assume that I'm trying to say that like I am the greatest and that all of my things are right like no no way absolutely not but um, you know there still might be something interesting in here that you could have overlooked not seen in the patch notes or something like that that's like recent I don't know like Whatever, you might get something out of it. If you're more of an entry-level raider, like you're just doing high-end duties, like Extreme, Savage, stuff like that for the first time, um, or you're kind of like a mid-level raider, you take like a couple months to clear the tier, that kind of thing, um, playing just a few hours a week or whatever, looking to like improve and see if you didn't overlook anything or if your settings could be better. Maybe there's something in here for you as well. Another thing I just want to point out before I get too deep into it is that uh, I actually play using a 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor, um, and like my hotbar that has all like my excess junk is over here, and usually my I use the square map over here. Um, and so as you can see, when I'm in my regular footage that you'll see in other videos on my channel or streaming or anything like that, um, in order to make it fill the full video frame, I crop the sides. So uh, just be aware that you know if things are kind of like off screen or whatever, it's because of that. If there's anything relevant, I'll try to bring it back to this view and show it, but we're going to stay over here anyway, just because that's normally how I record the game. Okay, um, so settings. I'm not really going to talk about anything in the system settings except for two things. Um, for the most part, all of this is just preference stuff, depending on you know how you want the game to look and feel, uh, hitting your frame rate target, how your hardware is. You're just going to have to play around with it to figure out what works for your hardware, but the two things I want to mention here are if you are a streamer please don't use this setting limit frame rate when client is inactive um, so the way this one works is we need something that's in motion so let's look at these waves uh, the frame rate drops when you click away from the game client so I have to apply this one so if I click away you'll notice the frame rate just became really choppy and it says uh, 18 FPS here now um, the reason why you don't want to use this one is because if you're a streamer and like you're looking at the game everything looks great and then you like click over to your other monitor and you're looking at twitch chat to see who just subscribed or whatever um everyone else isn't looking where you're looking like you don't feel like there's a problem because you're looking at you know your twitch chat or you're looking at your i don't know stream labs or stream elements feed or whatever it is that you use um, but everyone else is still looking at the game probably the way most streamers operate and so now you've just made everyone look at your like horrible 18 FPS like feed so uh, Just bad experience and this one here is the exact same thing um, Play sounds and window is not active. Please have this on it is like the most jarring thing to have like sound and stuff like this and then to have the streamer like click on like twitch chat and everything just disappears and like back and forth and back and forth and a lot of them will do it like that they'll be clicking in and out of the window and it'll just be stopping and starting the sound it's weird and it's a really weird viewing experience too when you're uh trying to watch a stream on the second monitor and the sound just keeps stopping like that it, i don't know what it is it makes me feel like the streamer has like quit the game like closed the game client like over and over and over again and i'm like oh is it time to find another stream no they're just 
Literally, they're just looking at, like, chat. And to you, it doesn't even occur to you as weird that the music stopped when you clicked Twitch chat, because you're looking at Twitch chat, or you're looking... Like, if you click on, like, your... I don't know. You click on, like, something that isn't the game, and you're looking at that other window, it doesn't seem weird that it got quiet. But again, to all the streamers who are just looking at the game, it's like the game is just muting itself over and over and over again. You see how, like, strange that is? So... It's just a weird viewing experience. Like, not a lot of people will actually say anything or complain about it, but I think that you should... Uh, keep this on and keep this off if you are streaming this game. Uh, I would honestly say that's a good rule of thumb for pretty much any game that has settings equivalent to those. It just just makes the viewing experience better. Okay, everything else is going to be pretty much focused on raid gameplay. So, character configuration. the Pretty much the big one right off the bat is Standard or Legacy. And um, I actually play Standard, but I recommend playing Legacy. So, here's the thing. This one goes hand in hand with a keybind. Um, by default, these uh, move left and move right are normally uh, like this, right? And so what that means is in standard play, your character like rotates unless you're holding the camera and then they strafe. I recommend changing them to the strafe keys the way I had it um, for either of these, whichever one you prefer. But on Legacy, what it does is it makes your character run to the left and right. If you're going to let the character run to the left left and right like this and not change it to strafe, definitely use this disable camera pivot. Because can you see from my footprints how I am not actually walking in a straight line? So for example, if I put down, you know, one, let's, yeah, let's use these square markers too, this is perfect, and two, so they're like a square, you can see like a parallel, right? And I stand here on this top line, and I face forward, and then I hold right, like I don't make it, like I should be making it there, right? And then if I turn on disable camera pivot, please use this, then instead what's going to happen is I'm going to run in a straight line and actually arrive where I where I should. So if you're going to play Legacy without rebinding strafe, disable camera pivot is your friend. The reason why some people might not rebind strafe is because they don't want to back walk when they're holding their backward movement key and a strafe key, right? So for example, if we go back to keybinds, um, which is here, the, the typical setting that most people use is strafe left and strafe right on S and F here. So you would have forward movement, backward movement, because this is legacy, and then you would have strafing if you're holding back and, and left or right. And, and a lot of legacy players don't like this, actually. So um, you can actually go without strafe left and right, but if you're going to do that, I think it's imperative that you use the setting disable camera pivot. Okay, why play Legacy? Uh, if you have a target, like this placard, and that, that placard is like a horrible boss, and it's casting some like giga huge spell that you need to like read the tell, you need to know what's going to happen. Um, and let's say it's like a, uh, the, their, uh, their boss model animates. So you have a, a boss model moving, doing some kind of tell, and you have to move away from it, but look at it. This is why people like Legacy, because you can move full speed backward. Whereas if I'm playing on standard, which is what I actually do, um, for me, this is backward. So like forward is like this, right? And then to look backward, I just have to turn my camera with my left click so that I don't change my character's movement direction. You know what I mean? So I really do that, right? Oh, I'm running away from the beach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I see that it's spread or I see that it's whatever the tell is. Um, but if you don't like playing that way, Legacy. Uh, I think for the most part, the only players who really play Standard are players who have a history or experience with other MMORPGs because there's basically no other movement like Legacy on the market. It essentially works the same way as controller movement, right? Like you noticed when I was pressing directions, like if my character, if I press towards, like down, I guess, and my character moves towards the camera, that's like how an analog stick moves, you know what I mean? Um, so that's that seems to be to me the purpose of it and I think that's supported by the fact that from what I've heard 1.0 the original release before Realm Reborn actually required a controller at launch to play the game at all so legacy old type of play same I think the same might be true for FF11 as well I think FF11 was built with controller movement in mind so all movement was like legacy even when you played on keyboard um, and standard plays you know it's like post WoW type of movement. Um, I have a history with like Guild Wars and stuff like that, so to me this is what feels right. Um, and rather than abandon it, I've just found a way to make it work for me in the game.
targeting this stuff is really good um, so automatically face target is important because um, in this game you can only attack something if you're like facing it so if we turn this off and I have my striking dummy here and I'm like facing away from it I, I can't attack it you can see that right but then if I face towards it I can however um, if I turn auto face on then I can be facing away and as soon as I press a button I turn and face it um, so this is good for like if I need to run circles around this striking dummy and I'm not really facing it um, I can still hit it um, so the same goes for like running around attacking enemies and then um, the, the sort of downside though is when you have a mechanic where you have to look away um, if you have this off you would just be failing to attack and if you have this on um, when you're looking away your character is going to look towards as soon as you press a button so the standard player solution is to constantly keep the camera latched with right click holding because in standard right clicking turns your character as you can see right so if I'm doing this my character is constantly turning between a few degrees that are away from the boss and so when I press a button it's like for one frame my character faces in and the odds of you getting snapshotted at looking at the boss is like astronomically low almost nothing so that's the standard player solution and you'll notice that if you're on legacy um, for whatever reason uh, camera movement doesn't turn your character on legacy so if you're on legacy even if you have auto face target um, on I don't play legacy let me make sure I'm getting this right so my character will still face and then right clicking doesn't turn me around anymore right so in order to turn around you would wait for the snapshot and then you would just press your, your downward movement right so it's like oh the look away cast bar is starting the look away cast bar is starting and it's ending and then you know what I mean that's how you would do it personally I just I, I I don't even though this is like annoying to wiggle I also have a greater sense of security that like I am absolutely looking away so I actually am believe it or not more comfortable doing the the wiggle tech on standard uh, this is the other downside to standard is if I'm moving forward and I hit my shield lob you notice it wants to turn me towards my target you see that but if I'm on legacy and I do that it shouldn't turn me towards my target yeah see it like turned me briefly I think to cast the ability yeah but I'm allowed to keep moving in the direction that I'm intending to right so there's a lot of advantages to legacy and very very few disadvantages basically the only disadvantage to legacy is essentially just it's uncomfortable if you're not used to it and I can quite frankly never get used to it um, it's been like 10,000 hours in this game for me I've never got used to it so I don't think I'm coming back from that um, and you might honestly feel the same way if you have a long history with with WoW or other MMOs but automatically face target kind of goes hand in hand with the functionality differences between these I think both modes want it on but you just have to be aware of how to cope with it to be honest especially if you play standard okay uh, disable targeting of pets and minions is really good because why would you ever want to do that um, I'm only going to talk about things that are super relevant. This is new and really good. Auto target according to priority. And you have your option of line of sight or closest range. I like closest range because, like, I would rather auto target even if this thing is, like, behind me and, like, outside of line of sight or something. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I believe line of sight works as a cone, kind of like the uh, target closest, like, ignore depth or cone modes. Um, be careful with this, though. There is some content where you won't want to attack a particular enemy, um, such as the new uh, Criterion dungeon, another Mount Rockholm. You, you don't want to attack um, like the very first ad in the first encounter, and so if what you're attacking dies and you're just rolling GCDs and you press the next button and you're like arranged or something, there's actually a pretty good chance that you might pull that, that middle main ad in towards you and get your party killed. Um, battle effects, this is obviously really important. Um, I prefer to show all of my own and limited of my allies. If you don't know, show all means that, like, for example, if you got a paladin in your party and they press this, you see this, even though it's just an AoE damage ability, you really don't need to see that. Um, so show none would turn it off, but if you went to show none and then you had, I don't know, an astro in your party and the arena is like this thing's as big as most arenas now so it's kind of a bad example but the arena is like giga huge and they're like staying in the star you can't even see well i mean it's not a very defined edge it's these sparkles but you can't even see the edge of of earthly star 
by an Astro if you're on Show None. So Show Limited shows you important support abilities that you might want to stand in, or if you're a tank you might want to pull the boss into. Like I, I if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I can see my co-tank Dark Knights, Salted Earth, I can see a Ninja's Doton, etc. Um, limited is definitely the option. So all of my own, limited of party and others. Um, mouse targeting, enable clicking on self is pretty good. Um, you don't want to accidentally be fighting the enemy and then you target yourself and now you're like, why can't I like do my rotation anymore and you didn't notice that you like messed up targeting. Um, and so the same thing with all of these disable right click selections. If you're doing camera work with your right click a lot, um, or character turning with your right click a lot, like uh, like standard players in particular do, but even legacy care players at some time um, sometimes might do that. Turning off or turning on all these disabled right click selections is really good for not accidentally, you know, targeting somebody that you don't mean to. Uh, actually, this one is sort of preference, but I think it uh, makes a big difference, which is display action help um, position fixed. So if you okay, I don't advocate clicking anything. Um, the only thing I really click is my food. Uh, because we don't do it in combat and everything else is keybound, but I, I can't tell you not to click and expect you not to do it. So this one is for the people who do actually click. Like in this case, what's my sentinel cooldown? Like I have no idea, right? In this case, what's my fight or flight cooldown while I'm spamming holy circles? I have no idea. Um, because the tooltip is covering them because it's following the mouse. So you definitely want to use fixed. Um, and then in the HUD layout settings, there is actually boxes for item help and action help um, as well. So you can literally decide where you want those tooltips to appear. Get them out of the way of your hotbar, and then if you're a clicker, at least you can see what your cooldowns are, and you're going to use your buffs on time and your OGCDs on time. You're going to keep your stuff aligned and not drift. Display flying text. So this is the text that floats up and down on your screen when you are uh, receiving buffs and debuffs. Um, particularly, a lot of debuffs in high-end duties are going to be important and are going to tell you what it is that you're doing in a given mechanic. And so the floating text is a really good way, in my opinion, to be able to sort of focus on two things at once to kind of like see what you're doing with your rotation and see that floating text pop up kind of in your peripheral vision and then react accordingly. So I like to make it large and I would recommend it. Maximum's a little bit crazy. Uh, if you actually look at maximum, it's, it's pretty big. To me, large makes the most sense, um, but standard is a little too small. Play with it, feel what works for you, but I recommend large. Um, party list, I actually personally think that uh, splitting roles is really weird. So if you're in a party, for example, uh, and the default for tank is tank healer DPS, um, if you're in a party, I think the, the default for heal for all of these is tank healer DPS. So if you're a healer, then your party order would be like healer, tank, tank, healer, DPS, 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 DPS. And that's like weird to, to me, like you should never have the party list splitting up roles like that. It I don't know, I find it breaks my brain. Um, so uh, I always have like supports together and DPS together. So to, to me, essentially having an order by default that's tank healer DPS, but putting whatever role I'm playing on top by matching it like this. So like healer tank DPS, DPS tank healer, like according to what role I am. So if I'm DPS, all four DPS are on the top of the party list. Um, the reason why I do that is because you're always number one on your own party list. You can never like make yourself go somewhere else. So. Uh, I think it's important. And in here also, by the way, you can sort um, how the different jobs within the roles are sorted. Let's say if you play a lot of Astro uh, and you're going to be giving out cards, um, you know, you might put like the best melee party uh, member, you know, in the top slot. Like, for example, if you got like, I don't know, I don't actually play Astro, so I, forgive me if this is wrong, but maybe like maybe a samurai just like absolutely bursts under an Astro card or uh, maybe a ninja you know, because they have so many OGCDs, like fills it with like a lot of little potencies and it just adds up really good. Like, I don't necessarily know for sure. And then maybe like a black mage who's in fire and going crazy with fire fours or something like that. You can put them at the top or bottom essentially of your list. And then out of the four DPS in your party, you can assume pretty easily if you're like panicking and can't really like look carefully, you can assume the top DPS is probably who you want to give a melee card to and the bottom one is probably who you want to give a range card to. But I know that advanced Astro play, there's even different timings like I want to say maybe Monk with their 45 or 40 second perfect balance. There's like different timings to give a Monk a card that work out. F yeah, forgive me Astro players if that's like kind of wrong. You are not my most understood job lately. Um, 
Display name settings. I don't see any purpose in having my own name showing unless like I target myself, I guess. But like especially in combat, like I know who I am. I don't need a name tag for myself. You know what I mean? Um, but I do think it's a good idea to have some form of name tags for your party members, even if it's set to only during battle. Like, uh, it's good to be able to, like, like you don't want to, like, oh, I didn't see you because you're a tiny little Lalafell and you were standing underneath me. If they've got a name tag there, you know they're there, right? And then I would actually also recommend adding these job icons. This is under display name general. Um, this is a relatively newer setting and it puts these icons beside your name. Um, it also helps a lot with mechanics where uh, there are s like splits by like roles. So for example, in uh, P10S, there are these stacks where you are in roles. So like all of the supports, the tanks and healers are together in one group and then all of the DPS are together in one group. With these icons on your name tags, you have a pretty good idea if somebody's like standing in the wrong group. Even if you can't solve it during the poll, if you're, if you're streaming or recording or something like that, you have footage to review, you're gonna see right away what was wrong. And uh, these name tag job icons will help a lot with identifying that quickly. So I recommend having them on. And you can also increase the display name sizes if that's going to help you with visibility. For me, standard is enough. Maybe it's also worth mentioning that um, you can actually take the text color of name tags and change it according to role right here. Um, I think the icon's enough, but if you want even more visibility on that, there it is. Also turning off this display of the traveler title for people who are data center traveling in duties. Um, Cause this can make name tags really, really long. So, and you know, once you're in a duty, it doesn't really matter that much that they're not on your server. They're, they're in your party. It is what it is, right? Hotbar settings, um, recast timers, position centered. Like you don't want to be trying to look at this tiny little 60 to see when it's time to fight or flight. You want to be looking at a nice big number right in the center like that. Um, just so much easier to track your stuff. I highly recommend Centered. Uh, if you're one of those people, if you're like me and you find that you don't notice during a poll when people say something in party chat, um, you can come in here to notification sounds and turn on party and pick a, a sound effect. Um, this has helped me a lot because sometimes you'll get, yeah, you'll be like partway through like a poll in a in a raid and somebody says something like oh if i get this i'm gonna go here because you find out your group forgot to talk about it during setup or something and then you're like i don't know what to do because i didn't see that message because i never really look at my chat during raids well now you'll hear a sound i don't know it's helped me a lot one more setting that is really impactful actually is third person camera angle what this setting changes is how high or low your character appears on the screen um, i believe zero is the default so for example, if this tent here was a boss and the boss was um, telegraphing something above its head, perhaps, um, which has been known to happen before, and you're having some difficulty seeing it from where you are in the arena, or you don't want to like tilt your camera as far upward, um, make an adjustment to this setting and find a spot that you're comfortable with. Uh, I would not put it too high um, and then not being able to like see behind yourself, especially when you have spreads and things like that. So um, I think that 50 is the perfect number for me. And of course this slider is really finicky and won't often land. Like for me, it seems to want to move two at a time, but yeah, I like 50. It makes me feel like if I were to divide the screen into thirds, um, you know, roughly, that my character is somewhere along like the bottom third of the screen while the default will put you in the middle so yeah um, really really important setting make sure you adjust it away from zero to something in between okay next up uh, HUD so there's some interesting things that I've done with my HUD that I don't necessarily think I would recommend to everybody um, one of the big ones is parameter bar uh, that's the the, these HP and MP bars, um, I don't use them. Um, so in the settings under party list, uh, hide party list from solo, I think this is the default setting. So you notice I don't have a party list. Um, if you turn this off, then no matter if you're in a duty by yourself, like no matter where you go in the game, you're always gonna have this. And so because of that, I always have HP and MP right here. So I don't need this. 
um, I consider it redundant to have both. Um, this one, of course, is larger. You could make your party list large. I don't know. I just don't find this useful, so I don't look at it. Um, I guess one other thing to mention with the party list as well is you do have a status effect display maximum. I have mine set to 8 because the way I have my HUD layout, um, if I set it to 10, it would start running into some of this target stuff. So probably the better thing to do is I should have my party list on this side of my hotbars, uh, but I'm not going to do that yet because there's always, with these changes, there's always an adjustment period. Um, I'll wait until there's a lot of downtime, like maybe in the last couple months before um, Dawn Trail, and then I'll perhaps consider putting my party list over on this side so that I can have like icons running as far to the right as I want. Back in this view, just so you can see everything, absolutely everything, is where everything is on my HUD. Um, and I'll keep this up for a little while here. Um, you can see certain things are off. Um, this is a matter of taste. I don't care to see Gil. You know, I, I, there's, there's a currency window, right? I'll use the currency window. I don't care about the inventory grid. Again, I'll just open my character tab or open my inventory if I want to see that. Um, you'll also notice I've got some hotbars over here that are um, off. And I'll explain what those are in just a second when we get to keybinds. But um, so yeah, this this being mostly how my HUD is set up, toggling my utility bars uh, and my F keys bar, which is basically just for double hot keying and isn't meant to be seen uh, with macros. Um, I don't use the circular minimap except for gathering. Um, I hate this minimap. I feel that it's not zoomed out enough, even though this is maximum zoom. And even though I can enlarge it, it doesn't shrink the contents within an enlarged ring, so it doesn't actually let you see anymore. So to me, I find it doesn't give me a wide enough view, and so I don't like it, I don't use it. I always use the square map, personally. And you can lock the square map so that you won't close it with escape. Um, and I have it always locked and never transparent. Where is it here? Yeah, never transparent. Okay, um, I think it's important to have things near your character. Now, I've never tried out one of those WoW type, or sorry, I have tried out one of those WoW type HUDs where um, all your GCDs are like way out of the way over here or over here or something, and you just have like your main cooldowns. Maybe the GCDs aren't even on the HUD except for like one that you can track the GCD clock on, um, and then the rest of it is just your cooldowns. Um, the reason why I don't do that is because I tend to think of like the way that I play my rotation like relative to each other. So like for example, um, my first combo will always be like one, two, three, and then if there's branching steps, you know, I might have something like this. So I kind of think of this as like one, two, three, one, two, or one, two, three, one, two, three. You know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, it's time for like inner release and upheaval, and then it's like. Fell cleave this, fell cleave onslaught, fell cleave onslaught. You know, I've got these. But like it all moves, like it's all sort of relative to each other. Like this is almost like a heat map of like my rotation, what I just drew here, right? And so like, because to me, like my key binds are all relative to each other. Like this bar is like numbers, this bar is numbers with control and this bar is numbers with shift. Um, because it's laid out like that, I don't know, I just think one, two, control two, one, two, three, you know, control three, control, like, it, it, it's hard to explain it in words, but the way that my brain works, like, these buttons are relative to each other, they're positioned relative to each other, there's like a, a logic to it that makes sense to me, that's mainly focused around, you know, these movements across the bar, right, like, that's how I kind of remember a rotation actually is some kind of visual like this like what you're seeing here um that actually like kind of means something to me and so because of that um i don't do the the yeah the sort of wow player method of just like some cooldowns like right up around my character you know like i'm sure you guys have seen it like you just have like a bunch of cooldowns you know and like none of this stuff exists and the, this job gauge is probably like right here and you probably have like hpmp and then like the target bar is like right here um i haven't gone into that level of like like crowding my character i don't necessarily think that it's necessary um 
you know, uh, I do think it's important to separate the target cast bar and in particular make it larger than everything else. Like there are so many important things that are going to be telegraphed to you in this way. Um, and so the way that you do that is in HUD layout, um, when you have a, uh, the target info section, um, display target info independently. Um, so you turn this on and it gives you target info HP, target info progress bar. This one's the cast bar. As you can see, I've chosen 200%. Target info status. Um, yeah, I just make it huge. I want to see it like big as it goes. Um, another one that has a, a settings sort of sub menu like this is status info. So if we're in the status info section, you can also see split element into three or four groups. So when I, when I do that this way, and when in feeble mints, these are debuffs, those are right here, and you'll notice uh, I've made them larger because once again, debuffs a lot of the time tell you what you're gonna have to do in a mechanic, and you wanna see them the instant they come up. So making them larger and putting them in a prominent place. Um, enhancements, um, as you can see, I've kept enhancements right above my hotbar. This is because I'm a warrior main, and so I have to maintain Surging Tempest. And it's not like overly difficult or anything, but for me, it makes a lot of sense to have it right here. It's so close to like the DPS sort of section of my hotbar that as I'm like keeping track of my cooldowns and stuff, I'm constantly able to look here. It's right beside my meter, right? So down here you'll see, you know, my FC buffs, and then if I have people in my party, other buffs will appear here as well. So for the most part, I've kept things close to my character. Um, even my party list, which is over here, is still not that far to look at. Um, not not having it all the way up here just reduces eye travel. I'm not looking super far away. I'm not looking all the way up at the top of my screen from my target's cast bar. I've put it right here under my character's feet. You know, it keeps everything kind of compact. Everything is like only a glance away, a very short glance away. Um, yeah. Uh, another thing that exists in HUD layout is for every job, um, you of course have the option of a simple gauge. It's just compact. It literally just saves screen space. Um, I don't need to see some like fancy thing there. I, I, I don't know. I, I played the game before job gauges were a thing. And so to me, I just, now that they are a thing, I just keep them simple. Um, or enemy list, I guess. Um, as a tank player, especially, it's important that I have it somewhere nearby. But um, yeah, it's right here. I keep it nearby, I keep it ready on hand. Duty actions. So um, if I'm in, you know, somewhere like Bosnian Southern Front, or if I'm doing like E5S and the uh, duty action pops up as a tank, you know, it's got to be somewhere I can see it. It's got to be keybound. Okay, so let's talk about keybinding next. So uh, I think it's really important to keybind as much of your gameplay as you can. Um, you don't really want to play like clicking as much because like, well, it depends on how you play. For example, if you have an MMO mouse and you're activating all of your abilities with your thumb and you're doing all of your movement on your keyboard because your left hand is free from activating abilities because they're all under your thumb, then maybe you can get away with clicking some things. Um, but because I don't use an MMO mouse and I'm activating all of my abilities with my keyboard, I prefer to avoid using my movement keys too much and do a lot of my movement like this. Um, sometimes with added strafe to change my angle or especially to add, like to change my viewing angle. Um, you know what I mean? But for the most part, um, key, the keys are for, you know, I move into place, right? Like let's say I gotta get on the corner of two, I move into place and then I might like tighten up my positioning with like a couple quick presses of the movement keys. But for the most part, you know, I might be running around. I'm probably running around going like one, 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 two, 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 three, two, three, one, 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 two, 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 control, two, two. You know what I mean? And, and doing my movement with my left and mouse, left and right mouse buttons both held. Um, and so for that reason, uh, having everything bound is like tremendously important and I just recommend it anyway um, whether you're doing it with your with an MMO mouse or whether you're doing it with your keyboard uh, for me the way that made the most sense was um, I can't really reach past six I have like medium large hands I can't really reach past six though so um, I go for one through six uh, and then control one through six and shift one through six and you'll see that control on my little keyboard display up here 
is actually in the caps lock position. That's not a mistake. That's how it is on my actual keyboard as well, um, which makes control a really comfortable keybind. If you're reaching all the way into the corner where my actual caps lock button is to press control, um, you might not find control that comfortable. You might prefer alt, whatever. Do what's right for you. Um, control is not that bad of a reach for me, so uh, I use control and then I use shift. And then on the right side of the hotbar, I'm using the bottom row of letter keys because um, I find that a lot of the keys that are clustered around the movement keys um, lack a sense of horizontal continuity, right? So you'll notice that um, essentially what I'm thinking of is my bar as like a line from one to six, a line from one to six, a line from one to six, a line Z through N, control Z through N and shift Z through N. And that's because um, if I had like my four movement keys like this, and then I was I, I had on my hotbar like one, two, three, like let's say this was like Q and then I skipped, let's say I was, my actual movement keys are ESDF, but just to make it simple for you, WASD, right? So let's say I try to make this Q and then this one E. If I had like my first combo step here and my second combo step here, and it's Q and E, it feels like I've skipped a slot. Like on my hotbar, there would have to be a space there. I would have to like leave a slot blank on my hotbar for this to make sense to me. Um, that's just the way I think. If you don't have that problem, then you don't have a problem with this. But um, So that's why you'll notice that a lot of the things like Q, W, E, whatever, don't belong to these hotbars. Um, w is actually my sprint. Um, R to the right, so if my forward movement button is E, R to the right of it is actually my duty action. You know, G is my mount key, while my movement keys are these, right? So G is my mount key. Um, Q is pot, I'm not gonna press it because I don't wanna waste the, the money. A is actually a double bind with this button and I always put a gap closer there. Um, and that's pretty much everything that surrounds my movement keys. Um, and then the bottom row is dedicated to cooldowns, right? And sort it out however you want, right? Put, put your stuff wherever it's gonna make the most sense to you, but essentially bind everything and yeah find a logical a logical way that works for you um that was the logical way that worked for me okay and then the other thing that's worth mentioning is this extra bar so once again just to show you where it is so this hot bar exists for f keys um and uh so obviously i don't provoke with shift v that like provoking is something that you usually need to do pretty quickly um for like a tank buster or something like that so uh, i need to have it on a key where it's quickly available to me and f1 made a lot of sense um but everything needs to be visible here because I look down here to monitor my cooldowns. Now you might ask, why isn't this key literally F1 instead of Shift V? Well, it's again because of that sense that I have that things need to be in a linear order. And it's also because when I'm playing other roles, there is no equivalent to provoke. So something else might be there. Not every job in the game has like one-to-one -one, um, parallel concepts like Obviously a DPS job has far less mitts than a tank. So like, you know, I'm gonna have other things here. But as much as I can make it make sense, I try, right? So like faint is there and on a caster, you know, addle, magic barrier. Like, I hope you understand what I mean. So anyway, provoke um, on F1 makes sense to me, but it doesn't necessarily make sense to me to have um, this button be F1. So provoke exists over here as F1. And so same thing with shirk, it's a macro for the off tank. Um, this one would be F3, but I think F3 is actually the hardest one to find. So provoke and shirk, I'll tend to put like both my fingers on it. Um, usually it's my ring finger and middle finger on F1 and F2 when I go to use them. Um, F3 I think is the hardest one to just like naturally put my hand on, so I don't actually use it. And then F4 is my stance, and F4 is pretty easy to find. Both F1 and F4 are easy to find because the F keys have those spaces between them, right? It's like escape, a space, and then it's like F1, F2, F3, F4. And then there's a space, and then F5, F6, F7, F8, right? You can see on the keyboard display if you don't have a keyboard in front of you. Um, and so because it's really easy to find that space between F4 and F5, it makes a lot of sense to have F4 be the stance. And then same thing with the invuln being F5. Um, it's actually there because I'd never want to accidentally press it because it's such a like long cooldown But I need to be able to press it fast and immediately a lot of the time especially to save a pull So f5 makes sense because it's way out of my way and I'll never accidentally press it But when I need to find it because of the gap between f4 and f5 It's really easy to just move my hand over there and find that it's the first one in that set of four 
between f5 and f7. So it sounds like a crazy bind, but it works for me. Um, you know, if you like that idea, use it. If that's way too far of a reach for you or you don't like it, don't use it. Um, similar idea with like the tilde button to the left of one being my interrupt. Um, it's one of those things where you need to react and use it quickly. And so because my hands are usually on like hovering over like one, two, three kind of area while I'm doing a rotation, tilde is like really easy for me to just reach out, reach over and, and like tap in like a quick reaction. So I think it's a really good bind. Don't underestimate that button. You should use that button. It's really good. So that's it. Um, not really much of a guide, I would say, but if this uh, was helpful to you, you know, let me know. If you like vehemently disagree with anything I said, you think I'm like totally wrong, uh, go ahead and comment. Let me know. Dislike if you want to dislike it. Like it if you did like it. Um, hopefully, or maybe it just opens a bit of a discussion. You know, if you just want to share how your settings are, um, if you think you've uh, come up with like a really good idea for a, a keybind or a setting, or you found a setting that you think is like really impactful. Um, that I don't know about or I didn't mention, uh, please feel free to mention it. And uh, that's going to be it. So yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.